Hello everyone, my name is Val and welcome back to my channel. How are you today? I hope you're good. <laughs> I hope you're okay. I hope you're feeling great, really. I hope you are. Um, in today's video, I'd like to walk you through one of my lessons called Leonardo da Vinci. It's a very special lesson for me because I love Leonardo. I love for what he stands for, you know. This lesson uh, is designed for grade six students. In this uh, lesson, students listen, receive and identify information about the life and works of Leonardo da Vinci. They improve their listening abilities. They improve their critical thinking skills. They improve their understanding abilities. Uh, they get to answer a lot of questions, a lot of follow-up questions related uh, to the topic of this lesson. And at the end of the lesson, they um, need to produce at least two sentences to describe Leonardo's life or one of his works. Um, this lesson is available for sale in my store on Teachers Pay Teachers and also I have included a very detailed lesson plan that goes together with this PPT lesson. So if you are a new uh, teacher and if you're not sure how to teach these types of lessons, all you need to do is to follow this lesson plan to the letter and I guarantee you it's going to work just like like that <laughs> yes and if you are an experienced teacher um you are welcome to tweak this lesson to uh fit your needs or you can just you know um follow follow my lesson plan and do it the way i do it but again you can also improve it and make it better you know True learning never stops and it doesn't matter how much experience you have or how many um, uh, degrees you have. There is always, always a way to make things better. So, you know, um, use this lesson and turn it into something that you think is going to work uh, better for your students. Okay, um, so let's get through. Uh, let's get to the uh, walkthrough. But before uh, you do, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit that bell icon to turn the notifications on, so you never miss a single upload. If you like this lesson, please go to uh, my store on um, Teachers Pay Teachers and buy it. By buying my lessons, you support my channel a lot. Thank you very much. I will see you soon. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Let's take a good look at this PowerPoint lesson. As you can see here, this PowerPoint lesson contains 62 slides and let's go through all of them. Well, most of them. <laughs> So the lesson is called Leonardo da Vinci. This is the topic of our class. Uh, this is my warm-up routine, which I'm going to skip. This is where you um, uh, introduce yourself if it's an open day class, uh, put your students into teams and go through your um, class rules. Let's learn. All right, so show your students this slide and ask your class if they recognize the man displayed um, on the slide. Most probably they're going to say yes, it is Leonardo da Vinci. Then ask your students um, what they do well or what they are good at and to elicit answers from three, four, or five students. And then you can say that every single student in this room, in this class, is good at something. Maybe it's um, science, maybe it's languages, maybe it's math. Maybe someone um, loves to listen to other people. Maybe someone is a good listener. Or maybe someone likes to solve puzzles. Most of us have at least one talent or interest. 
and Leonardo da Vinci was very, very special um, because he was brilliant at everything he tried. And also maybe you can have a short discussion here that it's important to have hobbies, to have interest, because the more you know, the more equipped you are to deal with whatever the life throws at you. And it's really important in the trying times. Um, okay, then you go to the next slide <clears throat> and here you answer the question, the one you saw before, who was Leonardo, right? Um, so Leonardo was, you click next and look here. So we have an artist here, but do not show them the answer right away. Try to retrieve the answer from the students. So most probably somebody's going to say an artist. And then you click next or uh, press space bar to show the word. Yes, Leonardo was an artist. Then you click on the image and it will take you to the slide where um, you give a definition of an artist. So an artist is someone who, and again, retrieve the answer from the students. So um, if you see that they struggle with it, you can display it by clicking next. So an artist is someone who draws or paints. So this is the image of an artist. And here we have two um, images. One is painting and one is drawing. And you can ask your students, what is the difference between painting and drawing? Listen to their responses. It doesn't matter whether uh, they are correct or not. Just, you know, retrieve as many responses as you can. And then you can um, give them like the main differences. You can say that um, painting uh, is wet. So we use paints and a brush to paint. And drawing is dry. We use a uh, pencil or pen to draw something like that. Of course, if you are more knowledgeable in art, you can give them more differences between painting and drawing. And then here we have a home button. You click on it and it's going to take you to the first slide. You click next. And again, you try to elicit what it is from the students. Who was Leonardo? He was also an inventor. Again, <clears throat> you click on the image. It's going to take you to the slide where you can um, practice relative clause and you can ask your students to complete the sentence. An inventor is someone who invent something new. And here again, um, we have two super famous inventors. One is Thomas Edison and one is Nikola Tesla. And you can ask your students what they know about these two great men. Um, also here you can have a conversation about the greatest inventions ever. Uh, one of the greatest inventions is the wheel, for example, or a compass. And also like another interesting question here could be, um, uh, what did Thomas Edison invent and what did Nikola Tesla invent? So Thomas Edison invented the light bulb and Nikola Tesla invented the radio, uh, among all other things they did. All right, again, you click on the home button, it goes back to the original slide. Then next, who, uh, who was Leonardo? Leonardo was a sculptor. And again, if I click on this um, image, it's going to take me to the slide where we can talk about sculptures here. A sculptor is someone who makes sculptures and you can talk a little bit about sculptures here as well. Go back and let me show you three more images. So Leonardo was a scientist, Leonardo was an engineer and Leonardo was a musician. 
So uh, let me click on scientist. A scientist is someone who studies science, right? Go back. Uh, Leonardo was an engineer. An engineer is someone who designs machines. And Leonardo was a musician. A musician is someone who plays music. And on this slide, um, you can, again, uh, elicit more information from your students. Yeah. So um, what is he doing in picture? What is the man doing in picture one? He's playing the piano. He's a pianist. Um, what are they doing in picture two? They're playing the violin. They are violinists or violin players. Yeah. So uh, you can do something like that here. Let's go back. Now we have a pop quiz now. Um, I use pop quizzes in my classes for two purposes. One is to check comprehension and two is to introduce an interesting fact. So here, since it's a storytelling lesson, I'm going to introduce facts to the students. And here's my question. When was Leonardo born? Uh, to answer this question, I would ask a student from each team to stand up and they would need to choose the correct answer. And it's okay if they don't know, you know, um, they can just uh, give it a give it a try and guess the correct answer. In our case, the correct answer is 1452 C and then uh, on the next slide we have a sentence and here is when you ask your students to read the sentence after you leonardo was born on the 15th of april 1452 and also they can write it write this fact in their notebooks all right here's one more question one more pop quiz question so you would invite another pair um, to answer this question and hopefully they can give you the correct one that Leonardo was born in the town of Vinci in Italy. Here's the next slide. You tell them that he was born in the town of Vinci in Italy. His father was a very wealthy lawyer. This word is hyperlinked. You click on it and it's going to take you to the slide which explains the word lawyer. Yeah, so this is a lawyer. His job is to give advice to people about the law. You click on the home button. You go back. And here's another piece of information. His mother was a peasant. You click on the word peasant. It takes you to the slide where, which explains the word peasant. This is a peasant girl. She worked on the farm. All right. Um, what does Leonardo's name mean? This is something actually very few people know. So I'm sure it's going to be very interesting for your students. So the name Leonardo da Vinci means Leonardo from the town of Vinci. And these are pictures of the town of Vinci in Italy. This is where Leonardo was born. And his full birth name was Leonardo di Ser Piero da Vinci, meaning Leonardo, the son of Mr. Piero from Vinci. Here you can also say that a uh, long, 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 long time ago, um, if you did not come from a wealthy family, you had no right to have the last name. So you were named after the time you were born in. Um, now let's proceed to the next slide, Leonardo's paintings. So here you can see four paintings. We're not going to use all of them. We're going to, we're just going to need four. So we have the Mona Lisa, the Last Supper, the Annunciation and the Vitruvian uh, Man. But we're going to need the Mona Lisa painting and the Annunciation painting. This is it. Here you can just ask your students um, how they feel or what they think about this painting or which painting they like um, the most. And then you go to the next slide. Leonardo's early painting. 
This is one of his uh, major works, early works. And we are going to talk a little bit more about this painting. It is going to be uh, listening practice. So here you can say that Leonardo never went to school. He learned and worked for an artist, Verrocchio. And then you tell your students that uh, you are going to play uh, the audio file. Uh, and they, are ne they need to listen and try to remember as much information as possible because they'll need to answer questions on the next slide. And um, also, if you are knowledgeable, if you know um, the background um, of this painting, you don't need to play anything, you can just tell them. So uh, pretty much the information that this audio file contains is that, okay, Leonardo never went to school. Uh, he learned um, reading, writing, and math at school. And when he was uh, 14 years old, he learned and worked for an artist, Andrea del Verrocchio. And Verrocchio was his teacher, yeah? He taught him uh, metal work and leather work, um, oh, sorry, leather arts, carpentry, drawing and sculpting. And uh, Leonardo showed great, great talent. So Leonardo and Verrocchio worked on this painting together. Leonardo was uh, 20 at the time. So what do we see in the painting? You can um, ask uh, your students. And then uh, you can say that the woman is Mary. The, uh, sorry, the woman is Mary. She is reading a book. And the man is uh, Gabriel. He is an angel. And he tells Mary that she will be the mother of the Son of God. Leonardo's teacher, Verrocchio, started this painting and asked uh, Leonardo to finish it. And now you can ask your students, what, um, what do they think Leonardo painted in this painting? And yeah, you can get all kinds of responses and then you can say that Leonardo painted the background and also he painted the, uh, the wings of the angel and uh, the story tells us that uh, Verrocchio was fascinated by his work so much that um, he decided not to paint ever ever again but again we don't know if it was true or not it's just an interesting fact all right when we go to the next uh, slide these are the questions your students need to answer. So uh, you will listed the answers from the students. And again, it doesn't matter if it's correct or not. <clears throat> you just, you know, the first exor exercise, the listening practice was aimed at your strong students. And here, here, they can listen again. If you uh, click on the play button, uh, the story, uh, like I, I recorded the whole background of this painting here, you know, it's a one or two minute long uh, story, they can listen to it, and as they listen, they need to take notes, they need to write down the answers to these questions, yeah? So, uh, when, well here, so if I click play, like this is what's gonna happen. Leonardo never went so it's pretty much the same uh, what I told you just now. So they listen to it again, they take notes, and then you check uh, their answers. So you ask your class, did Leonardo go to school? No, he didn't. First you listed the answer from the students, then you show the answer. What did he learn at home? How old was Leonardo when he came to Verrocchio? How old was he when he painted the Annunciation? And what did Leonardo paint in the Annunciation, yeah? So uh, this is where you check their um, comprehension. All right, now uh, the next painting, you ask the question, have you seen this painting before? 
and they'll say yes and you'll say this is the Mona Lisa the most famous portrait in the world and also here is a good um time to introduce the definition of the word portrait you can say a portrait is a drawing painting or photo of a person or a group of people if an artist um, paints uh, his own portrait it's called a self-portrait and uh, the word selfie that we like to take we like to take selfies. So the word selfie comes from uh, the word self-portrait. Uh, what is special about this painting? Yeah, you can ask your students this question. Um, you can get, you probably get different responses, but uh, the special thing about this painting is Mona Lisa's smile. Yeah, and we have a pop quiz. Um, how long do you think it took Leonardo to paint the Mona Lisa's lips? You have a student from each team and you give them four choices. Uh, they need to choose A, B, C or D. And the correct answer is D, 10 years. Uh, where is the Mona Lisa's painting today? See if they recognize this museum and then show the answer. It is in the Louvre, <coughs> excuse me, museum in Paris. Yes. Um, one more pop quiz. Yeah, so uh, it's an interesting fact. In 1962, the Mona Lisa painting cost $100 million. How much does it cost today? Right? And the correct answer here would be A. $867 million. Nearly a billion. All right. Um, next part of the lesson is Leonardo's inventions okay so uh here ask this question what did leonardo invent and elicit the um answers from your students so they need to uh come up with a full sentence which would be Leonardo invented blah 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 so uh, here they would need to say Leonardo invented an airplane and a helicopter if you click next you will uh, get to the slide which has more information about uh, these inventions so this is an airplane it has two wings two engines it can fly through the air you can talk about the parts of an airplane this is a cockpit engines wings a vertical tail to uh, horizontal tails or sometimes they're called stabilizers you know um, cabin fuselage and so on all right and this is a helicopter it can fly straight up and down so here there are six inventions i'm not gonna go through all of them and uh, i think you understand the idea yeah so six inventions you go uh you show them to uh you show these inventions to the students and read about them together Okay, and here are uh, Leonardo da Vinci facts. Uh, this is pretty much the last uh, piece of information about Leonardo. Just give them interesting facts about Leonardo. So one, he was never married nor had children. He was left-handed. He could write backwards. And this is a good um, time to do the first task. So click on the words backwards and it's going to take you to the slide called mirror writing and uh, explain to your students that backward writing 
can only be read um, with a mirror. That's why it's called mirror writing. And you can demonstrate if necessary. And now you can invite a student from each team to try it. You know, you can write down the word on the board, for example, Leonardo, and you can ask them to write this word backwards just to feel what it's like uh, to write backwards. Yeah. Uh, click on the home button to go back and show the next fact. Uh, Leonardo could write with one hand and draw with another at the same time. And again, you can invite um, a couple of students from your class to do it on the board, to give it a try. They can, for example, write the word apple and draw a triangle, something very simple. It's a lot of fun. The end, like when they do this, as they do this, they understand how difficult it is, you know. Uh, fact number five, he loved animals and was a vegetarian. And fact number six, he made maps of Europe. And this is the last activity that recaps the lesson. It's a game, a writing game, and these are the rules. So your students need to choose a word. They need to use it in a sentence and each word in the sentence will get a point for their team. So uh, here, you can invite one or two students so they can work together from each team to the board. And yeah, so they choose a word, any word they want, and they need to use this word in a sentence. So for example, if they choose an artist, they need to write down an artist is someone who draws or paints. Now, each word in the um, sentence will get them a point for their team. Also, and this is optional, I want to emphasize it, also you can remove points for uh, grammatical mistakes. But again, it's optional, you know, and also tell them that uh, there is a bonus. Um, so they need to pick their words carefully. If they pick an easy word, so look, if I click on this word, uh, this is a, the, uh, these are bonus points they can get for their team. But if they uh, choose a difficult word, like verrocchio, for example, is a very difficult word because um, it's difficult for them to remember maybe uh, some information about verrocchio. But the sentence they could write like verrocchio was Leonardo's teacher, that would be enough, you know, or verrocchio um, and Leonardo painted the, in, uh, the enunciation together, something like this. But since it's a difficult word, it's worth 10 points, right? So it's, 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 um, it's a good game, you know? So, uh, two teams, you know, each team choose a word, but they have to choose different words. So it's not the same one. So they say which word they want to choose and they use it in a sentence. Uh, you check the sentence, you know, uh, eliminate all the mistakes, um, count the points, and then you click on the word to show how many extra points they win. They love this game it's engaging and also they get to practice writing sentence structures and they are motivated to make longer sentences because each word in the sentence gets them a point okay and um as you probably know i always include homework assignment this is an optional activity you don't need to do it in class you can assign it as homework or you can just skip it. So my homework assignment is a poster. They need to draw their favorite invention and write about it. Yeah. So uh, in my case, it is the smartphone. Yeah. My favorite invention is the smartphone. I use it every step of the day. It wakes me up in the morning, tells time, lets me send messages and talk to my friends. I use it to listen to music, watch movies, play games, take photos, pay for things, browse the web, and most importantly, learn English. Yeah? All right, and this is the end of the class.
I hope you enjoyed what you saw and if you did please go to my store and buy it right there. Thank you very much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Hugs, hugs everyone. Bye.